Okay, welcome back, dear viewers, to I believe this is session 36 of Lamentations of Elemental Evil. The last game session, the party uh, got involved in an interstellar conflict involving aliens uh, that could uh, sh transform, we'll say, uh, into um, various objects ranging from harpsichords to carriages to barrels to houses. Um, they sided with a group of rebels who were trying to free their planet and bring the primal matrix back uh, to their home planet. And uh, they were successful. Uh, uh, quite the rousing success, actually, because uh, they fought off a bunch of these uh, aliens uh, without much help. And uh, we're able to pacify them. So we will pick up there uh, in St. Michael's Bay where the war was taking place. Let me get the uh, map up here. As I recall, you guys spent about a day or two ransacking this abandoned town. And it's abandoned because everyone's been killed. Uh, and... Uh, I put the gold that you found, or excuse me, the silver that you found in the chat uh, of our uh, Discord. And over the course of those couple of days, um, the aliens uh, were at the other end of uh, that sort of land bridge where the ruins are, uh, retrieving a spaceship that is that was and uh, in the water. And uh, what is sort of brought out of the uh, water is this uh, giant eyeball looking thing that is, it's a living ship. Um, it's made of flesh and uh, uh, you essentially watch them sort of enter into, um, I guess it would be what you presume is this a sphincter uh, and the ship begins to take off. This is after two days of you guys ransacking and resting up. Uh, so make sure you mar uh, modify your hit points appropriately um, but before they leave the ship sort of hovers over the village and madrigal uh sticks his head out of like this one orifice that kind of opens up and all this like goo drips down and splatters all over some of the trees uh, and buildings and he tosses you a, a rather large conch shell um maybe about uh 18 to 24 inches across and he shouts thank you f again for all of your help thank you for uh helping us defeat our enemy uh uh thanks to you we'll be able to head back to our our home planet and, and free our people use this uh in your darkest hour and and with that uh your vision or uh, the, the the orifice kind of closes up and he disappears back inside this fleshy spaceship and the um your entire vision seems to get blurred and you have a sharp pain in your head and uh uh you see time and space fold and the eyeball is gone the big fleshy ship is gone your headache goes away and everything is your vision is normal again well look at all this land we got now Indeed. We own an entire town. Since we just claimed it, yeah. <laughs> Do we need to tell anyone about the St. Michael's Bay? Once we fix the, fix the houses, maybe. Yeah, who would be the local person over this area? Like, who should we let know that this place is free of the grasp of, of the That's auto... Probably just a ghost town. It has been. They'll probably just leave it. So I guess it's no emergency. Uh, if you're asking about like who would be governing, um, hard to say because you're out in the borderlands. And while, uh, for example, the Iron people are trying to move in, hence the existence of a church here. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a uh, part of any kind of protectorate. Um, the church might would certainly have some, uh, I guess, jurisdiction of sorts. So talking to the uh, uh, clergy in 
Homlet might be a good idea. Get, let uh, Calmert and Turjan know. Uh, that's something you could do. But as far as um, whether or not there's a lord over these lands, uh, the only way to find out would be to talk to whoever was uh, controlling the man uh, owned the manor house. And as you know, they've been turned into quivering masses of goo, one of which you um, mercifully put out of its misery. Yeah, we might want to spend an hour or two just killing any and all piles of goo just to, uh, not just to get them out of their misery, which is obviously important, but also to, uh, so um, we can get rid of them and bury them uh, before new settlers come in. We might need to see if we can help them. We could. Uh, how would we do that? No idea. Me neither. Um, I'd need to. I would need a specimen first, so I could burn it and cut it, and you know all that stuff. Figure out how to how to help it. Well, uh, over the course of the couple of days ransacking the place, um, you would have definitely bumped into the other. Uh, you wouldn't know their names, but the other owner. And he is just like the other one that you encountered. Just this quivering mass of goo, crying in agony. So there was two. One you've already dispatched, and you've encountered this other one. All right, so if I can't, like, go into, like, some big prayer to Arn over this thing and, like, try to bless it or something, if that doesn't help, then ending its life sounds like the next best step to me. Okay, um, is there a spell in mind, um, or are you, uh, uh, beseeching? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I want to use Bless. Okay. And I want to use Cure Light Wounds. Oh, okay, all right. Um, nothing seems to happen. All right, then I'm going to bless it with my hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Be gone, sinner! <laughs> All right. Um, it doesn't uh, when it when it realizes what you're doing, it doesn't move, and uh, allows you to hit it. And uh, it only has one hit point, so it is destroyed. Poor guy. Oh well. We tried. I think they're ready for their long life to end. Yes, who knows how long they've been like that. All right. So what do you think? Back to the Arn or up the river? Mm. <clears throat> or we just set up camp here and start a trade route. Well, we, de we definitely need to let the church know about it so they can send some people out here to help guard this place and get it back on its feet. Repopulate it? Yeah, let me uh, bring up the your player's map here. So if you can see, St. Michael's Bay is kind of down there at the bottom. And the river that you want to get to is way across the uh, well, other side of the bay, so to speak. And over the course of a couple of days, you would have found some s small fishing vi uh, vessels, sailboats, that you could commandeer, uh, take. Splendid. Uh, big enough to load up the ox and cart on? Well, that is a good question. I am not sure you'll be able to get uh, the carts on, um, considering the shape and design of a, a basic uh, sailing vessel. Um, it has, uh, according to the rule book here, um, sailboats have a three-ton cargo capacity, but... Uh, which I think could probably fit most of your oxen. Definitely two sailboats could probably do it. Yeah, I was thinking if there's multiple vessels and ships, we might have to divvy them up a little bit. Now, now isn't there any kind of path or road along the coastline to that river? Because coastal regions are where civilization probably <laughs> So there should be isolated 
hamlets and stuff all along that body of water. Uh, you do not see any leaving St. Michael's Bay heading to the north or to the south. Is there any place in town that has like maps or uh, stuff like that that I suggest to the rest of them? Because my guy's illiterate. I, I ain't reading their stupid words. Um, you don't find anything like that, but uh, in your ransacking, uh, you have picked up, um, uh, I guess, some evidence um how do i want to say this ah yes uh kind of like a like maybe diary entry right where um the the individual is talking about how um their their family members are are particularly ill you know in the in the past like year or so and uh they're hoping that the priests in town will be able to uh, alleviate their suffering because they'd hate to uh, head towards the leper colony up the coast. Where's that at? Uh, all it says it's uh, along the coast. Probably a good thing that we're uh, not going by the coast then. Um... The uh, um, diary entry doesn't go into too much detail, but... The concern uh, is that um, whatever is going on over there uh, at the colony, um, it's not natural. So if there was a path, no one's been using it. You guys want to raid a leper colony? I'm pretty sure lepers are still worth XP. Just just make sure we use range combat against them and keep our distance. <laughs> one XP per leper is still one XP per leper. Yeah, they probably won't have too many holding a shield and a weapon at the same time or missing fingers. I mean, they'd be taking at minuses anyway. Okay. Lamentations, everybody. <laughs> yes, things you need to consider. All right, so you're going to claim the town as your property. Is that fair to say? Yes, and I see no reason if able, unless it's stated otherwise. Uh, if we got ships, we could also probably start a river shipping company, too. Yeah, that's true. What other settlements are along this river? Looks like there's Dunsmouth uh, on our map, but there's got to be other stuff that's not on the map. Yeah, if we could get control of St. Michael's Bay, that would open up the, uh, the, um, uh, like the, you know, our dude that's working in Homlet, that would let him come to St. Michael's Bay, use the boats to go to anywhere we want him to go to get stuff. Okay. Um, we we got to get this one back in control of the church first, though. We could sell the boats or lease them. Uh, precisely. Yeah, like idea. Pay me in fish. <laughs> so what's the plan, gents? You gonna head back to Hamlet? Are you gonna continue your exploration? I vote that we load up the carts and cattle onto several vessels and start making our way towards the tumor. However, if we want to go back and start buying a bland, I am happy with that too. I don't think we have enough people to manage boats with a whole bunch of oxen on them. Then that might be a good reason to uh, go back and get that. So, um, the sailboat says uh, required crew one. According to the, um, yeah, it's a little boat, though. Yeah, that is true. So, this would be, but yeah, but it says it still says three tons of cargo. 
that's mostly though probably underneath the you know like in the belly of it for yeah. like fish and stuff yeah well that's why i'm saying i don't think you'd be able to get the carts on and you, if you really want to bring the cattle and you probably could but it's going to be challenging to get them to actually go in there we need a mail or a caravel what they call them why are we set on the water There's no path along the road. Yeah, there's no road. We can make one. I mean, it's right along the coast. It's going to be hard to miss the turn. Go along coast, turn left at river. <laughs> yeah, I think. I don't know if we'll get lost. We might die on the way, but yeah. it'll probably take like a three months to get there. Nah, it's uh, no, you got some pretty clear road. Or uh, excuse me, land, and uh, you got a uh, you got yourself a pathfinder. Move a little quicker. <laughs> yeah, we could scout uh, like a X or two up just to see what the terrain's like. But but yeah, if we're taking the wagons, then uh, yeah, if we run into some terrain we can't pass, we'd have to turn back anyway. How much would it cost for us to make a caravel? Like have one built? Oh, I have no idea. I think they're in the yeah, if, if we're able to claim ownership of this place, could we trade settlement rights for services like uh, boat building and uh, crews and stuff? Ooh. I don't see why not. Actually, actually, you guys probably have a lot of silver. I was recently killed, so I don't have very much. <laughs> I recently swapped characters, so I don't think I have a ton either. That being we said, most of our silver out already. That being said, with the equipment we hauled back from the uh, from the Beasties Cave, uh, I could easily start supplying magical services. Dude, Caravel's thirty nine k. Fuck. <laughs> it takes thirty five people. So let's go back to Hamlet. Let's tell them what's going on up here. Let's come back with a a, a force of people. To take back over St. Michael's Bay, let's find us a bigger boat to go out there, and then we'll go. The church can make it, or could give us one. Yeah. We'll <laughs> trade in the city for a boat. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. That sounds like a plan. Let me ask you this. Would it be, is it faster to get from St. Michael's Bay to Hamlet? via waterway or is it faster to go on the road there i don't uh, know how far out that thing goes there oh that's that's the edge of the map so um yeah and that i don't know that river wouldn't uh, uh reach uh the the bay that you're on so right. it'd be easier just to, to hit the road okay let's not to overcomplicate things, we get. We should start making some canals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Let's start where I always start, right here. Hans, roll a two d six for me as you guys head on out. Okay. All right. Um, very. Uh, you guys are in the autumn months now, so uh, weather is b a bit chilly. Uh, I'm not going to say it's freezing rain, but um, you have uh, some definitely some cold rain. It's going to slow you down just a little bit. Basically, negate the bonus your Pathfinder gives you. So uh, you'll move three hexes across the map here. Um, Roll a D6 for me, Hans. All right. Let's see, is that... All 
All right, now I need you to roll a D10 and a D8. All right. Um, basically, like I said, it's like a cold, um, cold, wet, rainy day. Um, and as you're sort of passing through, um, you uh, kind of along the edge of this uh, of the forest here. Um, you co come upon a uh, what appears to be like a picturesque sort of uh, br a break in the woods, uh, kind of a roughly 50 foot diameter uh, glade, like in the middle of the in the woods. The grass uh, just seems to like a brighter green in color, uh, as do the trees. Um, well, it's fall, so they'd be a more vibrant. <laughs> red and gold uh kind of surrounding this area um and while it's still cold uh as you sort of step into the area it, it feels uh less less uncomfortable almost pleasant like um like you, you almost don't mind the cold or the rain and and the almost don't mind um, it's feeling like this place. That is actually a good question. What do I think of this? And what does uh, Gar think either? Uh, it is a... Uh, uh, you believe that this might actually be a beneficial place to camp for the night. All right. I think it's safe. It might be worth camping here for now. Let's do it. Okay, I need, uh, let's have uh, Gar roll a D3 and add one, please. Two. All right, um, regardless of your um, watch, uh, none of you make it through the night. You just, you just sleep. Um, whether you're trying to keep watch or not, you pass out. Uh, you have very pleasant dreams, um, almost like um, this, like wistful memory of uh, of of summer when you were younger. And uh, when you wake up, you're refreshed, and y'all have two more hit points if you were wounded, so you've been healed two hit points. Wow, blended. Uh, but when you wake up, uh, the the glade that you sort of slept in uh, no longer ap appears or feel uh, looks like or feels like what it was when you fell asleep. It looks kind of normal, bland. Kind of makes you a little sad. And let's see where we at now. Oh. I'll build a carn of stones to commemorate it and etch a sigil on it. Some swirlies. Might as well. All right. Uh, travel gets a little worse to on this day um, as uh, it's a mix of rain and snow. Um, you guys are actually going to only move two hexes this time. Uh, let's have uh, let's have um, let's see the map's in the way and I can't there we go Fergus that's right almost called you something else um, Fergus well, I, I, I keep wanting to say Malthus actually uh, roll a d <laughs> may he rest in peace uh, roll a d6 Fergus Yeah, I'm still not used to being called Fergus. All right. All right, the uh, 
weather persists through the evening and uh, lightens up a little bit, but it is cold. It's miserable. I like everyone to make saves versus poison. And I need Virgil to make a D6 roll on top of that. Saves versus poison coming right up. Gonna burn my luck for that one. Okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's see, I might have made mine. I was just looking at. Here we go. All right. Who 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 failed? That'd be me. I re-rolled with luck, and then uh, I made it on the second try. So okay. I've already burnt my luck point. See, it was uh, versus poison, correct? Correct. Yep, I made mine. All right. It looks like Gar made his. Hans, how, what are you looking I made at? It. You made it. Oh. Fifteen. Oh, poor uh, Feely. Um, little did you realize becoming mortal to travel with these fools uh, would lead you susceptible to mortal things. Um, you. Uh, you have uh, contracted a bit of a cold. You'll be at minus one uh, on any ability checks uh, and attack rolls uh, for the next 24 hours. Oh, how do you guys stand this? Okay, now... Uh, I hand Philly a, a, a piece of rag to blow her nose on. There you go. Thank you. All right, Gar, roll a d6 for this evening. It'll pass. Three. Okay, evening passes uneventfully. Um, we have... The, the rain stops, but it's still deeply overcast. Um, Philly, roll a d6 for me. You'll be able to move a good four... Um, Hexes today, at least. Three. Okay. And... Hans, roll a d6 for this evening. All right. Again, it's a little sprinkly out. Nothing bad. Uh, Philly, make another save versus uh, poison, please. D6 is three. Okay. There we go. Ah, you're feeling much better. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, Fergus, roll a D6. All right. You guys make it to uh, Garth at the crossroads by a little after midday. And uh, you were... Uh, greeted by, um, uh, you are greeted by the, um, oh, where, where is he? Rufus, and um, uh, he is uh, kind of presiding over uh, some uh, some grave, some freshly dug graves um, that are kind of being. Uh, Doug within the compound near the uh, center table there, um, uh, the shrine to Garth, um, and as uh, I mean the his soldiers recognize you and they they allow you in, um, and uh, he approaches you and he uh, he uh, shakes his head sadly. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, uh, I have bad news. We were beaten back by those uh, zombies and uh, the strange uh, fungus creatures when we assaulted the Mo House. I lost three good men. I only got seven left. I'll look over to Fergus and ask... Um... 
detour and take care of us? Did you even hint at battle? Ooh. Ask a... Uh... Ask Goldilocks if he's got any horns. I need a big horn. Horns? Yeah, I want a, I want a war horn. <laughs> uh, Fergus, uh, or excuse me, not Fergus, Rufus, my God. Uh, he uh, l lightens up. Oh, you're, you're willing to help? Um that would be that would be great. Um, uh, you can come with our men once we're uh, rested. I mean, the battle was just just the other day, um, uh, uh, just a few days ago. Uh, it was terrible. We just got back. My men are resting. If you don't mind staying here and allowing my men to recuperate, we could head to the mo house and uh, clear out the, the this uh, god awful awful plague once and for all. John, we can do it after we get back from uh, Hamla, so that we can relay some news to the church. Might be able to uh, reinforce his army here, too. Indeed. It'll uh, also, yeah, it'll give him more time to prepare and such. He, he nods. Um, what, what news do you have? Saint Michael's will... Bay is free of the grip of tyranny and, and, and evil, but everyone is gone. He nods grimly. Uh, well, that is that is sad tidings, but it's also, I guess, uh, good news to know that uh, the, the town has been cleared. Uh, perhaps someday you'll be able to tell me the story. Um, he no. <laughs> he he pads this uh, sack on his uh, on his side, and he says, "I still have the concoction that uh, Burn made to to uh, uh, att uh, uh, to attack these uh, f mushroom creatures with." Uh, but we weren't able to get inside. We 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 went in through the back way, like you showed us, and uh, we were we were beaten back quite severely and we were forced to retreat but um I, i'm confident i was that we will be successful if you join us next time does he uh i'd like to ask him if he needs anything on our way back we could resupply or something he kind of scratches his chin he says well if you can convince my partner to actually join up that might be helpful Pull him away from his studies? I can certainly try. All right. Well, he uh, allows you guys to rest up and um, uh, and we'll look forward to your return uh, once you get back. That being said, uh, this is considered a safe location. So... You may uh, level up your characters, those who did. And uh, the I'll be able to calculate the um, treasure that you've accumulated thus far would also get translated into XP. So just give me a second while I take a look at that. I'll do the math real quick here. Also, in fear of asking a gigantically stupid question while we're recording, but uh, I am morbid. I have been meaning to ask this for a little bit. Um, from a few weeks back, the uh, big XP that says, uh, "Remember, even your character died, you can still um, apply this XP to a new one." Um, as as um, my last one is still alive, would he get that experience, or would Philly? Um. If it's I, Gilbert, I don't really mind. I just, uh, yeah. Uh, well, when that, yeah, if your character dies, but like I was awarding experience for that session, I don't mind you applying it to your new character because, in a sense, you know, you the player, you know, you earned it, and that'll help lessen the blow. So that's that's for character death. So yeah, no, that would go to Gilbert. That is fair. In that case, I've got a little bit of time before I level up. <laughs> 
and uh, everybody else add additional 43 uh, XP for the sum of the treasure that you brought back from um, St. Michael's Bay. With pleasure. You said that was 43? Correct. Right. It's, and, one, uh, it's one yep. number off from a meme. Yeah, yep, you're right. And while we're here, I'll see if I can find some replacement dogs. <laughs> um, they do not have um, any dogs to replace uh, to give you, um, but um, you might be able to find them at uh, at Hamlet. Okay, dope. There's at least one in Hamlet, yes. Yeah, I don't think that one will come with me though. Okay. We need a whole pack of dogs. And we need yep. about six dudes to blow horns or doing stuff. <laughs> the whole hunt going. Um, all right. Well, with that said, let's uh let's get back to hex crawling. Oh, with uh with your Pathfinder, you're gonna get there by the end of the day. It'll take take one day so nice. let's roll for the all right yeah partly sunny warms up a little bit makes it nice and easy i'll just roll for the encounters myself nope all right you guys make it to hamlet by the uh, end of the next day when you leave Splendid. So it is. It is in the evening. Um, I don't know what you guys would like to do first. Um, where you guys are coming in? Uh, one. Oh, let me get rid of that because it's kind of blocking things. Um, as you guys are coming in uh, from the west, you know you pass by uh, the stonemason and whatnot. Um, uh, you uh, see to the north um, uh, sort of in the fading light of the day uh, the old Malthus estate it's marked as number 23 has stuff growing on it uh oh totally not my fault guys oh we don't think it's your fault um Stuff like fungal stuff. Uh, well, you, you're uh, each one of those squares is about forty feet, so it's hard to say. Say, but um, considering what you've been dealing with in the past couple of months, and uh, broadly speaking, this uh, year or so in, in campaign time <laughs> as players, uh, it's it's a reasonable assumption. Mm. Well, we're going to want to get the carts and oxen out of Danger's Way and investigate that. We're also going to want to see about hiring ship hands and people who can take care of that, and uh, maybe uh, recruiting your bolstering for the uh, armed forces against the uh, boat house. And dogs. Yes, thank you for <laughs> reminding me. They're very important. Okay, um, and then... So I'm just uh, writing down the to-do list. So you want to uh, look for some ship hands, hire some mercenaries, buy some dogs, and then investigate the old Malthus estate. Hell yeah. I don't want to deal with it. Ow. Say what? Oh. Yeah, we did it all. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, so what are you doing first? I mean, I know you got to you could easily take the cart and the oxen and uh park it near the end of the welcome wench. That's kind of your go-to <laughs> if you'd like to stay there. You don't have to. Um dogs you can pick up at um pretty much uh the herdsman. Uh he's got some dogs. He's got a, he's a sheep herder. Uh that's number 19 on the map just to the south and uh east of the church. You could also see if uh, 
The Trading Post has dogs. If you'd like, go talk to Grimog and Ronald. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna go with a no there. I'm gonna feed those guys to my dogs. <laughs> and, <some> uh, <laughs> you could also leave your stuff at the Teamsters place, number fourteen. I mean, you practice. You're in business with him. He's not gonna care. Um, and then as far as hiring ship hands and mercenaries, there is the tents of the and makeshift uh, shacks and whatnot of the laborers gathered in the woods on the far western side of the map, Mark 32. They're the ones that have been working on the castle. Um, and at this point, now that it's been brought up, not much work has been done to the castle. Not enough funds, you you assume, uh, to to build this keep. Oh, and passing by number thirty-one. That's the tower. That's Burns Tower. Uh, in fact, at this point in the day, this late in the day, uh, it's pretty dark. Um, you know, you see a couple guys on top lazily uh, manning. Uh, I believe it's a ballista on top. Um, it might be a catapult. Um, uh, they kind of see you. They recognize your your guys' battle wagon. I mean, you don't need a, a banner or anything. Everyone, you're the only uh, only act in town that that runs around with a battle wagon, a medical medical cart, supply wagon, and then artillery. So uh, you're pretty well known. Um, and so they they wave in acknowledgement. Um, so, and then of course, um, Hans would like to go to the church. So there's that too. What would you like to handle first? We can let him take care of the church thing first. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I'll take the lexicon and everything from the from St. Michael's Bay over to church uh, to them. Okay. Yeah, um, Calmert uh, uh, is happy to see you uh, and happily takes the uh, codex from you. And uh, he seems uh, uh, a bit saddened to hear about the demise of uh, St. Michael's Bay. Um, but uh, uh, he says this is unfortunate. The way of things of missionaries. We, we, we brave the wilds in, all, in order to bring the light of Arn to uh, to the to to the, the the heathens and to bring them to light and it's it's dangerous work. <sighs> they will be remembered. Uh, Turjan, on the other hand, he just wants to ask, like, so what happened and uh, did you take care of it? Well, I'll tell him about the things we ran into over there. And he's he's kind of astonished, right? Uh, but but nods, trying to keep his composure as you kind of explain what you saw. And then he says, kind of sternly, did you take care of it? It's taken care of. All of the uh, extra things are gone or dead. Praise be to Arn, he says. Well, uh, well, you have uh, uh, retaken land that was taken from the church. Um, that is no small feat. Um I guess the choice then, and he kind of looks to Calmer, kind of for uh, for approval. The choice is: uh, uh, Would you like to be uh, set up as the uh, abbot of the t of the town of Saint Michael's Bay? Of course, that will change your duties. And he kind of looks at you, make sure you understand what he means by that. Yeah, no, no, I'm not staying in town. I got <laughs> lots more work to do. Uh, Calmer seems a little bit disappointed. Terjan's very excited to hear you say that. And he's like, that's a smart choice, Terjan says. Uh, very well. well. The social ladder. And he says, uh, well, no, he's uh, Inquisition. He wants to see some more purging done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he says, well, very good. Uh, we will uh, reward your um, you and your crew with uh, 5,000 silver pieces uh, for your efforts. 
Uh, and at that point, Calmer kind of chimes in, uh, kind of embarrassed. But unfortunately, uh, the the church only has IOUs at the moment. That's so, fine. Uh, but uh, you can uh, uh, use our services whenever you need. Yeah, yeah don't, we don't we don't need an IOU, but in the future, if they can help us, maybe they will. You know. Okay. Uh, with that being said, everyone gains another thousand experience points. Nice. <laughs> Don't even need a Valiant Death XP. I'm rocketing right up. <laughs> the uh, the home base rule is kind of harsh, uh, but it, it is what it is. All right. Um... Honestly, honestly, being fair usually is a bit harsh, so it should really be like that. Yeah. Okay. So with that said, well, let me ask you, uh, Hans, is there anything else uh, you'd like to discuss with uh, these two? Uh, well, I tell them that we've got quite a predicament, that we need to get upriver, but we don't have a big enough of a, ve a vehicle to do it. Okay. Um, uh, Turjan sort of waves dismissively. You didn't just commandeer some boats or whatever those people have over in St. Michael's Bay? They're not big enough. No. They're too small. You would like us to acquisition what? A galleon? No, something maybe like a uh, flat river boat, maybe? Hmm. Something like that would work. But these fishing boats are ill-equipped for what we need. Colmer nods his head and says, and kind of waved waves Turjan to calm, calm down, you know, it's like, well, let me talk to, um, the car, the carpenter here. Maybe he can help. He's been helping us along so far with, uh, everything he's done for the moat house and, uh, other things in the area. Maybe he can, uh, uh t travel with you to St. Michael's Bay and you can build a river boat. Uh, I don't know much about these things. I tell him that, uh, give us a week because we intend, and I say it very quietly and whisper it in his ear, we intend to assault the moat house again. Uh, Terjan. One last time. Terjan, uh, very, uh, very happy to hear you say that. He says, I would actually join you, but I have uh, something else I have to take care of in town. Well, what would that be? Um, he sneers at you and says, uh, As I feared, the last party had that heretic Malthus with them. And he, is, he purchased property and cursed it. And I am going to be lifting the curse soon. We did notice something growing over there. Perhaps we could take a look. We're vaguely, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with what he was going and doing over there. I'm willing to join you. Do you think uh, Burn might be able to assist this little fungus be gone powder? Uh, the mention of Burn's name, Terjan scoffs again. <sighs> There's too many heretics in this town. You do what you will. If you wish to help, by all means. But uh, I was going to raise it to the ground. We'll help first. Fire's one way. Well, remember, uh, Tanner wants that uh, building so we can set up the magical equipment, eh? Yeah, right. unfortunately, burn it to the ground is not going to help us, is it? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember, we want to own property. We'll burn stuff when we've got a big ego and think we can get away with it. Or for like a stocks. <laughs> yeah, or... yeah, precisely. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Very good. Um, well, he he gives you a carte blanche and he says, uh, "If you need my help, I'll be happy to join you." But uh, 
when there's a cancer, it must be cut out and the wound cauterized. And he just kind of shakes his head. And he's, oh, and when he says that, he's looking right at you, Philly. Mm. Philly will take out a spear and, and hand him one and say, if you want to have a problem with me, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> She's calling his bluff and looking him dead in the eye as she does it. No spite in her voice, no seething anger, just, all right, have at her. Calmer immediately steps in between the two of you and uh, <laughs> says, uh, we appreciate, and he's looking at you and he says this, he's like, we appreciate all your help. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll take care of this. And he starts pushing uh, Turjan back, whose eyes are still on you. And uh, Calmer starts uh, chastising him about, uh, you know, what the real threat is and that, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, the enemy of our enemy is our friend and all this other stuff. Um, and it kind of pushes him out of the, out of the room. But, um, okay. So why don't we take our bio break? Uh, Gar, if you leveled up, you may, because you're in your home base. Uh, yeah. Good on you, man. And, uh, we'll be back in, like, ten minutes. See you guys then. All right, talk to you then. You back?
Hello? Hello. Welcome back. Hey, just put my giveaway live. Wretched Epoch, first printing hardback. Oh, Hot nice. Shot. That's oh, a nice. that's a great book. I yes, have, it is. Uh, I think, name in right now. <laughs> yep, same. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, like when I read Wretched Bastards, I had like I have one of the first printings. I was like, that's eh, okay. Uh, Wretched Country. I was like, I got a PDF for free because I was working on that monster manual for them, and I'm like, oh, this is cool, you know. And then I read Epic, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> this, yeah, they did good with that one. That was just great. Like it was. Uh, I've never seen anyone like capture. Wretched Epic is to like whatever 1890s France. Uh, is uh as uh lion and dragon is for like the war of the roses you know what i mean like it really ca captured the feel of that era i really liked it uh they they need to do more stuff like that you know but i haven't had yeah, go i want to get the new printing that they're doing for epoch to use with the new rules and stuff but i thought by maybe giving these away you might introduce some people to you know to the new system, maybe. I don't know. Probably the people in my channel aren't probably more familiar with Thread than anybody else, though. <laughs> well, if we're still going to do uh, Dragon Pants or Dark Dragon or whatever it is uh, down the line, then uh, Retro would be a good way to introduce the system. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I mean, if, 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 <laughs> if I, if my, my next campaign, uh, I was thinking about this. This has been this campaign is very mud core. I I appreciate you guys putting up with it, but it is putting up, dude. We love this shit. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, but I think my next campaign I'm gonna embrace the fantastical a little bit more. Uh, so there will be more, you know, magic items and stuff like that. But uh, I definitely think it would be hilariously fun to run Dragonlance with wretched bastards so i think that's going to be my next big campaign once this one wraps up which will be a little while but uh i just think that'll be a blast it's like... Bundy. Uh, and pardon me if i harp on on dragon pants or tonisborg i'm more than willing to do uh, some literal fantasy fucking vietnam <laughs> cool Oh, uh, yeah, well, that's going to be my next mini campaign for sure. Yeah. Once uh, Dunsmith is uh, wrapped up, I'll be doing... Uh, like Q-Long? Yeah, I, I, yeah K-Long with uh, OSE slash Modern Necessities. So, nice. Yeah, so what I want to try to do with that is see if I can uh, figure out how to get OBS to work with like a... Uh, with something like uh, Owlbear Rodeo, so I can use battle maps, because I think in a game like that, uh, battle grids might be a little bit more important and uh, make things a little easier. So that that's going to take some experimentation. So. Does uh, OSB Modern have suppressing fire and stuff like that? Yes. Oh, then you need a map. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like there's uh, Scrying Dutchman, like. Mo modern rules are his thing because it's like he's just into that gun f just those kind of movies and everything like that like he just knows guns and uh, th uh his 5e book like i don't I'm, i have no intention of playing 5e anytime soon but i backed his thing because I, I i thought uh s simple modernity was great and then he expanded on it with modern necessities uh, and it's really good so, um, yeah, I think K-Long, like that nightmarish Southeast Asian jungle fighting Lamentations of the Flame Princess meets AK-47s and M-16s will be really cool. So, but anyway. I'm back if you're waiting. I think the biggest trouble that you have in a game where you're using modern weapons is when you try to use those modern weapons along with non-modern weapons. Because when you start mixing them together, it gets all fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Um, and that's why it's going to be interesting because I don't want to give anything away, but there's a creature 
in K Long that um, I don't even know if they would be carrying guns, even though it would kind of like in theory make sense. You know, if you're just modernizing everything, but I don't know if they would. And if they right. wouldn't, then what would fights with them be like? Would it be horribly lopsided in the favor of the people with the guns? I don't know. So that's why I'm still working on it. But I still th just my gut is telling me that would make for a really interesting and fun campaign. So most I'm... of it's in ranges. The problem you run into is in ranges because you know, like a modern vehicle is going to move so fucking fast, it's ridiculous compared to yeah. And then modern guns are going to shoot so far compared to the other ones. That's where you have trouble trying to mesh the two together. Yeah. Yeah, because you start locking people up at the 300 meter range. You know. We could that, just. That's when you start shooting people at 300 meters. That's that's where the U.S. military kind of excels versus everyone else. Yep. We, we, got could... Our... <laughs> we could do some test stuff before Cray Long and, um, you know, just correct for error as we go. Oh. Well, I got to sit in on some of his brainstorming sessions when he was working on part of that. And... You nice. know, got to listen to some of his reasoning on what he was doing with it. He did a really good job with it, but that was the big, the big thing to overcome for him was the the differences in ranges and the scales of everything when you're mixing, mixing modern and non-modern. It just makes it difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Has he opened that up for print yet? Simple. Uh, yes. Yeah, I I I have I I picked up the uh, a print on demand and I have it. I was a little, I'm a little pissed off actually with um, Drive Through RPG because uh, when I when I got it in the mail it was all bent to shit. So oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I drive through is not what it that, used to be. Yeah. Him, I'm gonna have to ask him if there's no way he can put it on loot or something. Cause I'm gonna give him bastard the money. Yeah, yeah, I know. I like I respect the fact that like he and others like Basic Expert kind of have to use it, um, and. I, I have a little pool of money still in drive through so I'm using that right now. I got you. But uh, but yeah, like I'm I, if I can avoid it, I don't want to give them money. I so. use the hell out of it for free stuff though. Fuck them. Likewise, <laughs> we're we go. gonna steal from your table. This is how you're gonna act. <laughs> Noink. <laughs> use all their bandwidth. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so first thing in the morning after everyone is completely healed up, which I think we should be. Yep. We are going to head towards Malthus's place and early, early as we walk by, we'll wave at um the traders and we'll stop at the Teamster, see how he's doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh Teamster, um he is doing well. Um um yeah, you guys have been out for yeah. So he would have just gotten back with uh, some gear and stuff, um, and uh, there are definitely some customers. But there's a lot of loyal people still going. You know, the 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 town is still going to the traders. But there's a there's a few they have been going to the Teamster to buy some stuff. Um, so it's slow going. Uh, the traders, uh, uh, Grimog and uh, Rano's Devil, by the way, give you all very ugly looks as you make your way past. Um, I'm going to tell the Teamster before I leave, I say, what I want you to do is I want you to start setting up every morning, spend a little bit of money, and start serving breakfast outside for all those people coming in to build on this thing and start Philly's, drawing them over here. Philly's going to poke her head in. Make it all day breakfast. People love that. Yeah, all day biscuits. <laughs> all right. Uh, he 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 says I'll get my wife on that right away. Um, okay. And heading to the Malthus estate. Uh, to their stomachs. When you actually get to the cheesemonger's place, which would be the number 21 on the map there. Um, uh, you see the Miller uh, and his family sort of milling about as well. And when they see you, uh, he actually comes up to you. He says, are you going to be doing something about that? And he's pointing towards um, 
the mouth is the state. And, w and now that you're like a little closer, this would be about, let's see, one, two, three, four, like 300 feet, 300, 300 to 400 feet away, you can actually see it's starting to take the shape of a mushroom. I mean, you can still see a building, but the way it's sort of like uh, the stuff is growing around it, it's starting to look kind of like a giant mushroom. It's I'm gonna motion to Gar. Gar, can you tell what's going on? Uh, he knows all about mushrooms. <laughs> I'm gonna guess it looks like the stuff that we've been dealing with. What was on that little log? Uh, yes, actually, very much so. Mm -hmm. Pale white, little blue tints. Whatever wizard was here started this this growth. Uh, the the miller's like, yeah, exactly. He's one of the first of the of you, and he just kind of waves at you guys, accusing the adventurers coming in here with your curses and your. And he points to the house again. Whatever that is, he sh he shivers. I can't believe it. The druid can't do anything about it. Um, but I'll tell you who can. And he points to the church. Turjan said he was going to burn it down. I look at him and say, don't you worry, my young man. I plan to settle this for you. You better. This is ridiculous. I have to... I have to. Uh, my wife and I moved out of the, uh, our home because of this. And and he, uh, even uh, the cheesemonger wants to leave. So he's just kind of staring at you. I say it will be taken care of. By orange grace. Now, go back inside so... We men can take care of business. He takes umbrage with with the implied <laughs> insult. Ah, uh, it just kind of huffs. And uh, as you guys walk away, he and uh, the cheesemonger kind of move into a position on the road to kind of watch what happens. Um, so once he's out of earshot, um, I'll uh, ask the others. All right. So how do we take care of the mushrooms? It must be growing from something that Malthus brought back here, so we need to find it. Mm. All right. Well, um, the Malthus estate is, as you may recall, he purchased a small building, small home, a farmhouse. So uh, the main building there in the center of the map is the farmhouse. Uh, there's sort of a pen out front unused but that's where some livestock like pigs and whatnot were uh, there's a larger door uh, that kind of attaches to that livestock pen that goes inside the second part of the building uh, you know full well Malthus would never let a pig or a goat or anything else sleep in his home but that's how this place was built um, the second door that you see that's not attached to that dotted line um, pen uh, actually leads into the main building Okay, and then the second building you see is um, the barn. Uh, that discoloration is just part of the trail, in case you were wondering. Um, and give me one moment here. Okay, does the go. barn look to be is in the same shape as the main house, or less? Um, less, but there is stuff growing around it. All right, and so. They have it set up so, like, the pigs can go inside, and then there's a pen inside the house. That's awesome. Then you don't even have to go outside to get rid of the bodies. Now honestly, a genius. <laughs> honestly, if Philly uh, does set up shop here, uh, that's probably how she's going to keep it. Um, uh, you also see um, right next to the house uh, those little squares with the lines and little, like the diagonal line through it. That is old wood that's just been sort of, you know, firewood that's been um, placed there. And there is a path that leads to a tree out back. So, and yeah, and kind of crawling around and growing up around the, um, the house are vein, veiny, um, looking white, blue, fungus just kind of growing out and starting to take shape um and and, and more of a more three-dimensionally just sort of becoming thicker and thicker and um a closer inspection it actually looks like it's like breaking through cracks so it's not growing up from the ground it's growing from inside out mm -hmm. oh. 
All right, what's the marching order going to look like, fellas? Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking. Now, let's do this. Let's go first. <laughs> let's go take a look at where that path leads to the tree, mm -hmm. and then let's circle around, and then let's take a look at the, uh, um, and then the uh, the other building, and then we'll go in from the back. All right. All right. Uh, take it all in. Okay. Yeah. Um, circling around. Yeah, that path is old. It's starting to grow. It, it, it's it's a path that's just due to, uh, well, a path, a natural path created by people just constantly walking through there. No one's walked through here in a while, so it's starting to grow in. Um, but yeah, it's a it's just a really large oak with all kinds of branches going all over which directions. Did this used to be I gotta go pee, so I go pee on oak tree thing? Why don't you make a bushcraft roll? Oh, that's saying a lot for me. Hold on. One D six. Oh, I wanna try it again. Um, I'm going to roll it on my computer because it's just spit out nothing twice. Okay. Well, you can roll at your desk, too. I don't care. Do I rolled a one, actually. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, as you're sort of, like, looking around and you're kind of going through the motions as someone who might want to take a piss out by this tree, and you're just kind of standing there like you're in the middle of the act, and you just kind of turn to your left, and you notice that there's, like, a knot, a hole, like, in the tree, like at eye level. It's not one you sit on. Correct. It's like, it's up. So maybe they weren't using this to pee, but like maybe someone was doing it and then they turned and looked and there it is. There's a hole in the tree. Hmm. I'm going to point that out to everybody. What's going on here? You might have a spear or something we could use to try to see if there's anything in that hole. I do, in fact, have two spears, so I'll offer one. All right, who's who's actually sticking the spear in the hole? I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Giggity, giggity. All right. All right. Um, Hans, you're going <laughs> to... You're going to use this... I'm going to stick the blunted in first. Okay. Um, I just kind of poke it in there. You know, you... You hit the other side of the tree, poke it a little bit more, move it around, and then you you hit something kind of soft, and then you hear the clinking of, of metal. Hmm. Let's shine some light in that hole, and let's see if we can get a peek inside. Someone got a torch? I have a lantern. I can light you that. Okay. Uh sticking your head up and into the hole you see a uh, large pouch it's old it's weather worn and old I just pull it out of there okay. with a gloved hand all right as you do uh, you hear the clinking of coin inside Ooh. all right I have feelings toss that in my backpack and then we'll continue on she does so and takes back the spear and we'll look inside of it to make sure it's not a whole bag full of mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'd be fucked if that were the case. Uh, 72 silver pieces. Looks All like right. It looks like the uh, prior owner's stash. And by prior owner, I don't mean Malthus. It was the people he purchased this home from. All right. So, yeah, on the outside, you see the back part next to uh, – you see a door next to the, um, the fireplace there. Um, don't really see any windows. I mean, it's uh, it's a commoner's home. It's not very extravagant. Malthus probably felt it was a fixer-upper. <laughs> Let's make our way around the right side and over to the barn. Okay. He was slumming low-key. 
Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, uh, the barn uh, doesn't have any windows. Um, it's uh, it's rather rather small. Um, wouldn't necessarily say it was two stories, but clearly there's probably room for a loft. Uh, but similarly, uh, well, actually, let me rephrase. The the growths on the barn aren't coming from inside, and they're not coming from the ground. As you kind of come around from the right, uh, the growths are actually because the growths have reached out along the ground from the main house, kind of near the pen area, cross that area, and just started kind of crawling away and growing, growing alongside the barn almost oh. like it's spreading we're gonna have to right, make sure we make that our way mean... around i'm gonna cast bless for the day i end up with four points the, the dice roller is still screwed up so uh, and then we'll move around towards the back side okay yep yeah. uh nothing in the back area um in fact let me see here let me just bring up the town again here uh the back area is um, within about 20, 30 feet. Um, more yeah, closer to 30 feet um, is the is the river. So, and you see, you know, reeds, so on and so forth. Um, no mushrooms or anything like that. The growth hasn't reached the river yet. Um, but uh... so there's like veins laying on the ground. Yes, in between. Yes. Hold on. What happened? Uh, I think we should cut it. If anyone has a shovel, we could also dig it up. And if not, we could go purchase one. Can we try to use those to, like, find the way towards whatever it's coming from? It's creeping out of that door from the pens, right? Yeah. coming. Well, not, that's not just the door, but, like, from the cracks in the walls. Like, it, it's, like, forcing its way out. <clears throat> Looks like all roads lead to Rome, gentlemen. Feely, make a uh, search check, please. Search? One yep. search coming right up. All right, my search roll is at the moment two and six, and I've burnt my luck, so let's see how badly this goes. Yeah. Four. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a miss. All right. Yep. Um. Yeah. So, what are you guys doing? You're basically, uh, you've come around from behind the barn, um, approaching the tree. So you're, I'll say, you're basically need the tree at the bottom of this map here. I want to go up and cut one of these veins. Let's spread to the barn. Poke it with my short sword. Okay. Um, when you poke the vein, roll a d20 for me and let me know if you roll a one. No. Okay. 13. All right, yeah. Um, you cut into it. You break it. Um, nothing seems to happen. How many veins are going to the barn? Is it like one? Oh, Does no, it? it's it's quite a bit. It's um, They're all like all intertwined and just sort of like making the way over. Kind of filling up, if you think about it, uh, the squares between the two buildings there are kind of quite fill, filled up. Okay. All right. Got to wipe my sword in the grass and, uh, I don't know. I take a listen up by the, uh, 
the door from the pen. You want to crawl into the pen and then go up to the door? Oh, sure. All right. Um, I can help lift you over on the side over there. On the, on the right toss side toss the me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <I'm involved>. uh, <laughs> you, uh, uh, the, the pen is in disrepair and with some of the, um, the growth from the uh, mushroom fungus is actually knocked, o- knocked over parts of it and, and broken up. So you don't even, it's easy to climb over and in some spots you could probably squeeze through if you really wanted to. Okay. And when you get to the door, um, let's see, what would you hear? You hear, um, oh man, what would you hear? How would would I describe it? Almost like a flapping sound, but it's not, but it's also kind of like breathy. Like, like, um, like there's like a, like an intake of air or something. And then you just hear like this weird flapping, like this frenetic Oh. Billy will uh, think about it for a sec. I think the mushroom is breathing in there. That's gross. I'll uh, let the party know. There's there's something alive. <laughs> his mouth or is the, his ventilator. Or the whole thing's <laughs> alive. I don't know. His, his iron lung. <laughs> I'll step out of the pen. Um, I don't want to get caught by that shit. Maybe, um, how about the other door? Um, you don't hear anything. Main door? Yeah, there's there's no mushrooms around. I mean, the, there's fungus growing around it, but there's nothing, like, on the ground, so it's easy to get to. Um, you don't hear anything on the other side. Um, while you guys are checking that, I'll be right back, okay? Like um, I'd have to ask Hans about Malthus and if he would have set this place up trap wise or anything. Not that I know of. No idea, to be honest with you. <clears throat> no, people just think it's haunted. They have thought it was haunted before this fungus issue. That is, yeah, is that how he bought it in the first place? They're, they're trying to escape. Sorry, Valdi, what was that? Oh, I, I, was, weren't the original sellers trying to get out? Because they thought it was uh, a little off? Uh, no. Um, I think Malthus just, if I remember correctly, Malthus just literally offered them a a sizable sum of money for this rundown farmhouse. Oh, okay, okay. Makes so sense. they're like, "Sweet, well, <laughs> see ya." <laughs> and they were in such a hurry, they left their stash. <laughs> nice. I just uh, think we should open it on this side, but all right, let's breach here then. All right, let's uh, let's let's talk uh, marching order here, guys. Hod's gonna boldly stride forward with a goblin in his pocket. Yeah, I'll walk up to the door and just put a boot to it. Okay, be right behind those guys. All right, then Valdi, our pathfinder. Okay, then Fergus and Philly in the back. All right. All right. The door uh, bursts open, and uh, it's dark uh, because a lot of the fungus has grown over a lot of the windows, the shutters. Uh, Your lantern light spills over. There's a table in a room, uh, boxes, 
um, and um, some shelving, and there's fungus growing all over the floor, the tables, the boxes, up to the right. You see stairs going up with some of the fungus kind of going up the stairs, and then there's a door to your right as well, and of course there's the door to the back. And, uh, like, walking through uh, the room uh, without touching the fungus is going to be very challenging. It's everywhere. Can we hear that um, breathing sound now that this door's open? Um, yeah, uh, you can you can hear it faintly on the other side of the door to the right. Can I walk slowly uh, up? Is that a fireplace? Uh, to the north of Just you? The, yeah. yeah, to be by that door and side of the door to the right. Yeah. Um, how fast do you want to move? It's slow. slow. Well, each square is about five feet. Like, how fast do you want to move? Like, five feet every turn? Like, kind of, like, finding the right spot? Like, ten feet? How fast do you want to go? Like, define uh, slow for me. Oh, my gosh. Stepping like on if I was, If I was walking on dry leaves, I don't want to make a sound. So one... I could do, like, ten feet around. Okay. Um... All right, roll a d6. Three. Okay. Yeah, uh, you are taking your time uh, to try to avoid um, stepping on any of the fungus, including that in some instances you're actually putting your foot on what appears to be some item that was discarded and the fungus kind of grow grew parts of it on. So you're trying very hard to like find just the right spot. And at one point you brush up against some fungus and it cracks open and a little puff of spores pops out, but not enough to like, you know, infect the room or anything like that. So you oh. are currently to the left of the table. Uh, and yet at this point you notice that um, all the fungus where it's like most concentrated is the fireplace. And, uh, yeah, is the fireplace. Oh. We could destroy the fireplace and sift through that. I, from the door, I'll throw the lantern into the fireplace. Huh. Okay. Uh, um, into it. All right. Uh, Probably should have done this last time. Let's see. I'm sorry. I'll throw the oil that I have on me, and then I'll throw a torch. Okay. We're gonna make it go foom. All right. Um. Yeah. It goes up and uh, starts burning. Uh. From your vantage point, Gar. Uh. uh you see. As it goes up, uh, the first thing, obviously, that burns is a lot of the uh, mushrooms and fungus around it. And the smoke starts billowing up into the uh, fireplace. And as that kind of first layer burns away, you see a log with mushrooms growing out of it. Son of a bitch. And then that starts burning as well. Yeah, and, good, good. and from your vantage point... You think you hear uh, the angry scream, like on the edge of your perception, the angry scream of a woman. Oh, shit. Zuck-Tamoy is here. Malthus is seeing this woman on the evening times, huh? Oh. Oh, dear God. The, going. the last thing I need to know is what one of Malthus' children would look like. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got a 50-50 shot at having a mushroom tip. Oh, my. <laughs> Biggest mushroomist. <laughs> He's got a wife, you know. Is that breathing changing at all? Um, No. 
I'm gonna stay at the table and just watch the fire, watch the door. Okay. Um, uh, the fire burns, uh, the log burns, a couple other logs that were left in there burn. Um, and where it burns away and kind of severs the, um, the rest of the fungus where it was, it gets severed from that area. You immediately start to see it start uh, to wither and become more brittle. Oh shit. I don't know if we should be in here. <laughs> Might be I better to back out and throw some more food wood into the fire. Philly will also check and see if the um, mushroom veins are also starting to catch fire and or wither. I'm sorry, say that again? Well, you said that there were veins coming from inside the house seeping outward, right? Yep. She's going to make sure that they actually are withering as well. Um. Okay, so yeah, as you step outside and look... Um... You don't see that yet, um, but looking back inside in the firelight, um, it's like sort of like the slow progression as as the withering makes its way further uh, uh, from the, I guess, the epicenter. Right. Everybody's burning this house down. So we wait outside for a few minutes, let that work its magic, and then check back in here in about a half an hour after we rest. Mm -hmm. Time for s'mores. S'mores, s'mores. <laughs> yeah, I just got to keep your distance. <laughs> All right, so you, you toss some logs into the fire, and you're just going to watch it burn? Yeah, we're going to leave the door open, and we're going to step back out into an area outside that's not covered in that stuff and just wait for a while. Okay. Yeah, um, after, say, about 10, 20 minutes, the, uh, the uh, um, uh, fungus starts to sort of on the outside of the building and on the ground starts to wither and crumble uh, as it's uh, severed from the uh, epicenter. I'm going to take a small pouch and put some of the some of the fungus and stuff inside of it. Okay. All right. Are you, how are you doing that exactly? I just use like, uh, uh, my shield or something to like dig a little bit up and then just kind of scooch it into the pouch and cinch it up. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. All right. Yeah. So, uh, you, you're seeing the, uh, fungus die essentially around the building here and um let's go listen to that door gangor inside or outside outside yeah i'll head back over there all right see if there's any change in the breathing if it's become labored or anything all right um with that, um, as you sort of enter the building uh, and uh, head towards the door, there, Gar, uh, it's you know as soon as you enter the house, it's actually a lot louder. This weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know, coming out and. Um, uh, the door to the inside like actually gets slams um like it's like something ran into it you just see it kind of bulge and there's this, this loud bang everyone hears it even those uh, those of you outside hear it uh -oh. and you also hear some moaning coming from the barn and a thud a loud squishy thud well oh, shit I'm going to run back outside. Why don't we roll initiative? Okay. I rolled I'm going... Go ahead. I'm going to declare a spell. 
Okay, I rolled a three. Do Who it. would you like to roll initiative? Oh, let's have Hans. He's up at okay. the top here. You. No. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, give me a second. I gotta get these. Uh, Sorry, got to roll some dice here. It's much easier if you just assume they all have one hit point. <laughs> Thank you for the dungeon <laughs> mastering advice. <laughs> he's gonna give him. Tw he's gonna give him twenty now. Oh, you don't even want to. Know. <laughs> okay. We're in danger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love this game. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Gar, you hear this weird flapping, breathing, and it something slams into the door. Um, you guys hear it as you guys are outside, sort of in that area near the pen and the door. And you hear moaning, that sloppy thud coming from the barn, moaning and coming, shambling out of the barn is um i don't have a picture sadly um i didn't expect you guys to come back to hamlet today um but you see what looks to be like a man being remade uh he's part uh there's no skin on him you just see like bloody uh muscle musculature right doesn't have any lips so you see his teeth and his eyeballs don't have the eyelids and all that stuff uh but there's also um instead of um but you also see sort of like veiny um you know tendril of the uh, tendrils of the the fungus and the mushroom sort of like wrapping around and uh it says in an eerily similar uh sounding voice to you hans um you're ruining everything it sounds kind of like vincent price um sounds almost Holy like shit Malthus is back Fuck. this thing was like doing the um the fucking what was that damn odds maybe were they oh uh um in, uh, get body snatchers invasion of the body snatchers to mouth <laughs> it I see that as an abomination altogether. Um, all right. And um, with that, so yeah, so he comes out and he does that. Um, and this thing in, in the thing inside the home. Wrong die. Give me a second here. Uh, smashes through the door into the main room there gar yeah. and it's like this weird uh, uh mushroom monstrosity and uh when it breathes it's the tendrils on it's those big flappy things on the sides uh, all the membranes just <laughs> and they're just vibrating and twitching and making this god awful sound and all these tentacles uh, are flipping uh, fl flapping around um, it is um, let's see you're like maybe three and a half four feet tall yeah three and a half yeah this thing is probably f at least five times your size sweet I am running as soon as I can. Okay, so it comes out um, and uh, smashing open the door. So that's its its move. 
So, but it's uh, it's basically taking up that that big square in between the table and the door. All right. So now it's your guys' turn. What are you doing? Here, let me. Uh, if he's if he's not moving, I'll pop a shot and run. <laughs> Okay, morbid question, because it usually ends with me taking a chunk of damage right at the end. Should I turn on the funeral fog? You don't have a lot of members, man. That's not really your advantage. So probably not, then. In that case, I'm probably going to toss a spirit's way and then get as well. Hans is going to see that thing and say, you're ruining everything. He's going to pull down into his... Onto his side and pull up that big arm pistol and say, No, my friend, you are. Bam! All right. Uh, I guess I have my spear out already, so I will go up to the flopping abomination that's closest to me, which would be outside, and I'll I'll give it a good chunk with the spear. Oh, you're going to... Oh, I'm sorry. The, the This thing? The, the, the... Now, which one do I see? You see the Malthus pod person recreation thing. Right, that's what I'm going to attack. I'm oh, okay. Gotcha. Sure what here. Really wish I was on horseback now. That'd be easier. All right, yeah, you can easily, you okay. guys can easily move into. Uh... All right. That unfortunately will be a miss with your pistol shot, Hans. And Gar, your era, uh, short bow attack also misses. Yeah. Actually, I'll probably draw my sword because it does more damage, and I will sword this one out instead of using the spear since I'm not on horseback. All right. All right, let's see if this hits. 19? Okay, what were you doing? I'm sorry. There, Philly. You were running up to the Malthus Abomination. Oh, no, she's checking a spear at it. Oh, okay, yeah, well, that, that hits. Go ahead. Splendid. Then she runs. A piddly point of damage, but it's better than nothing. Okay. All right. Uh, Fergus, your attack roll hits. You slice into this uh, creature. Oh, plus one. That's three damage. All right. Uh, I think that's everybody. Uh, yes, Valdi, your attack uh, did not succeed either. All right, let's roll initiative. Oh, and uh, Gar, you're now outside. You took a shot and scrambled outside. Yeah, I want to go as far away, maybe due south. Okay, I roll a one. Uh, you guys got a five, so you are first. Splendid. I raised the other pistol, Varn. Okay, well, you do have a companion in melee combat now. Oh, uh, I I stopped Wait. I stopped oh. talking to Gar about this because I know he doesn't care, but you <laughs> you might. So there's a fifty percent chance you could hit Fergus. Um, I'll change weapons to the uh, uh, to the Lucian hammer, and I'll take a minus two. All right. Yeah, I'm also switching over to my sword and shield. Okay. You I'll get... throw a shot at the abomination if the mushroom, the flying mushroom, is exposed. Okay. Uh, the lucerne hammer swings wildly as you move into um, position behind Fergus against uh, the Malthus uh, creature. Uh, everybody hears a commotion from inside as whatever's inside wants to come out and you're hearing very agitated sounding f breathing flopping sounds um, that's a that is a solid hit Fergus that is a solid hit as well Valdi nice Oh my god. Yeah, all right. Uh so um <laughs> let's see how uh yeah, so Fergus uh with that sword swing you essentially sever um the Malthus uh 
creature uh, left leg at the at the hip and as it falls an upswing from Valdi it's kind of like runs up with a sword of shield it's an upswing uh, severs uh, its head from its body and it, it just lies on the ground twitching um, and it begins to sort of dissolve into the and seep, seeps into the ground at your feet and it quickly becomes nothing but like a, a pile of like gooey residue all right uh let's see i'll redirect the name at the opening of the house okay the door. all right oh you had the door open so yeah this thing uh squeezes its way through oh god i'm shooting it if i can yeah go ahead All right, yeah. Um, it kind of like your arrow actually seems to get like stuck. Like it hits it, but it doesn't seem to penetrate. It just sort of like gets stuck and then just sort of falls off. You guys hear down the road, you hear the equivalent, like the equivalent of Jesus Christ, what is that? You know, um, <laughs> and people are starting to scream um, as uh, this fight breaks out into the street here at the end of the lane. Um, it's uh, got um, reach, so I'm going to say with its move that um, it will flail uh, an attack at Hans and Philly. Because you guys are kind of... Ooh, all right. Well, those are going to be hits. I, hit over, uh, I rolled over 20. So each of you take. All right, uh, Hod. Oh, would you roll mine again from my low point? Okay. All right. Rather than take eight points of damage, you take three. Uh, I'm at minus oh, no, three to roll again. The hit. Oh, to roll the hit. Oh, okay. Yes. I I try to duck out of the way, damn it. All right. Uh, you take. Or I'm sorry, that would be a. Oh, that's still a 20. That's still a 20. Oh, still a hit. Yep. All right. So you take eight points of damage there, Hans. And Philly, you take seven. All right. I'm at minus two. Yeah, one sec. Uh, Almost thing we need to drag this motherfucker over to um to uh Indeed's house. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> drag it across town, fight it in their yard, by God. Just kite it. That would be great if we could get it inside their shop. Alright. I rolled a two for initiative. Uh Philly, yeah, you're uh you're basically incapacitated. Uh the whip from the tentacle uh, not only smacks you in the chest, it's knocking you down, but it almost burns a little bit when it hits you. Yeah, and you're beginning to fade. All right, can they try charging her real fast? Yeah, I can give that a try. All right. I don't know if you can help. If you can't, let me know, and I'll try to help her. But uh, I'm yeah, yeah I'm I think minus to three is is the cutoff for helping. I made the roll. So. Oh, nice. Okay, roll a uh, uh, D three. Yeah, 1d3. Pardon me, I'm back. All right. Jeez. All right, Philly, you're, one hit point. you're at one hit point. I'm at one hit point. Excellent. You see the you, your elven eyes fall upon Valdi looking over you. As he's patching you up. Thank you. Thank you, warrior. Uh... Don't leave us yet, elf. Uh, Philly will just give you this really grim, determined stare and just nod. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, that is not going to be a hit. No. Uh, this is really okay. What? I right. can close in combat this round, right? Yes. Yep. Oh, jeez. 
Yeah, that's a hit. 24, yeah. All right. Boldly striving forward is Fergus, uh, and uh, you slash open one of the tentacles, and uh, you see... You hear what sounds like what could be uh, a, uh, a change in the way it's flapping and breathing. You, you, you think you heard it. All right, so who hasn't gone? Okay, yeah, so the Lucerne Hammer, that swings wildly. Um, Faldi did his thing. Gar? Uh, I'll take a shot, regardless of who's next to it. <laughs> Well, this thing is pretty big, so uh, I'm going to say in a 1 in 6 chance you hit Fergus. Of course, knowing your luck, I'm going to I'm gonna roll it. <laughs> All right. It wh your arrow whizzes by his head. Now roll to see if he actually hit it. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, it whizzes by the barn. Cause you can't even hit a barn the broad side of the barn. Get it? Nope. Get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. This thing um, go, goes to attack. Fergus, and that is going to be a miss. And the second attack uh, would go towards Hans, and that is a miss. Roll initiative. Wrong die. Ah, I rolled a one again. All right, you guys are going first. All right. I'm going to get behind something far and prepare an aim action. Okay. Yeah, uh, there's uh, the... There is the... Uh, so the battle is basically taking place in the discolored area in the center of the map. That's like the trail, the, the stone path, okay? Right. That tree down to the south, you could easily get cover and take a shot at. This thing is pretty big, too. I mean, it's dominating. Um, all right, that is a hit there, Gar. Let's roll your 1d6 to see if you... Uh, Okay, yeah, you don't. You 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 hit it. Roll for damage. Uh, sadly, the Lucerne hammer is swinging wildly. Three damage on that. Okay. That is a hit, Valdi. All right. For four. Okay. With each of these hits, uh, the the flapping of its weird membranes um, uh, is agitated. We've dubbed this the breathe holder. Okay. It's the flying fapper. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, Fergus. I don't think you've attacked yet, have you? No. Oh me? I think I rolled eleven. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah, that that's a miss. All right, it's turn. All right, we have Valdi. All right, well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so Valdi and Fergus. All right, uh, 14 against Fergus, and unfortunately a 20 against Valdi. This 14, I don't think hits Fergus, does it? Nah, I'm 17. I was debating about switching over to defensive, but I think I'm just going to keep regular. Okay. Uh, Valdi takes seven points of damage. Has this... How bad off does Valdi look now? Uh, I'm down to about half. Yeah, the uh, one large tentacle uh, uh, snakes its way uh past your defenses uh, and uh, slaps you into, slaps your chest sending you back a few feet. Again, you feel like this burning sensation as, as it's almost like it's uh, acidic. I'm going to declare a cast a spell. Alright, let's uh, roll initiative. Okay, this time I rolled a five. I'll roll it. I'll use one point of bless to take it to a six. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. All right, very good. All right, what are you guys doing? 
All right, so for my spell. Yeah. This is how many levels that Fergie gets. Three hit, three hit dice, and everything that comes with it. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. For, what spell is that? Four rounds. That's why I like Heroes. the Heroes spell. <laughs> oh, nice. So he gets a uh, plus three to attack. His saving throws will be at three levels higher. Uh, and he gets three hit dice. Yes, for four rounds. Okay. So roll your hit, by, hit dice, brother. There's your heal. And then I say it like... By the power of On, I command thee to fight! And it's all crazy, and the sun, the sun starts coming out through the skies. Yeah, you know I don't fight for Arn, right? <laughs> yeah, but I cast it on Baldi anyway. If you're killing oh, you cast it on Baldi? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so he wouldn't. So he was half hit points. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> I thought you said Fergie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought you said Fergie, too. Um, I'm sorry, Fergus. Um... Uh, Mid Valdi, rather, because yeah. he's at seven hit points. Yeah. Isn't Fergie the member of the Black Eyed Peas? Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. So I would, I would argue, though, that um, if he's killing the enemies of Arn, he's effectively fighting for Arn. So you know. Uh, so Valdi, you do not get a plus three to attack, but you do get the bonus hit points and the bonus saves. Oh, and I you're... thought he was a fighter. Damn. Oh, he's a pathfinder. Um, pathfinder. <laughs> oh. You did, is... you did say you did say Fergus first, so you you could hit yeah, him. Yeah, I thought he was a fighter. Fergus. I would have put it on Fergus, I guess. Well, shit. Well, I thought you were a fighter. Well, uh, make make your decision. What do you want to do, uh, Fergus or Valdi? Valdi, you give him some extra hit points, so he has some staying power. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna stick with Valdi since he's at seven anyway. Okay, uh, Valdi, roll your extra hit points that you got, and uh, your bushcraft roll would go up. Not that it matters, but I don't want to do any bushcrafting in the next four rounds. So. <laughs> yeah, like I got an extra nine. Okay, sounds good. All right, so light. The, the the clouds part and light shines down upon Valdi and uh, uh, he seems to gain a, a little bit in stature as uh, he gets ready to his attack with his shield and his uh, sword uh, Fergus would you like to make your attack roll uh, that is unfortunately a miss I threw a shot at uh, what did you roll? Four to, yeah, that's a miss as well. That's going to be a miss there, Valdi. Uh, the 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 fungal hide is a little too thick. You're not breaking through. Uh, Philly, are you aiming this round? Um, I did say that I was aiming, yes. Okay. So if an issue has been rolled, then it's time to throw, I think. It's its turn now. Okay. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so we'll do the same thing because it's Fergus, Hans, and Valdi that are kind of up in its face. All right, so we got Valdi being attacked and Hans this time. Oh, jeez. Okay, so Hans, uh, that uh, you easily sidestep um, a, uh, a tentacle that slaps into the ground next to you. I rolled a 21 against Valdi. Um... You may be blessed by Arn, but you're He's cursed. illuminated by Arn. <laughs> you're <laughs> cursed by the devil, and you take three points of damage as uh, you're smacked by a smaller tentacle. It like, comes at you. All right, let's roll initiative. I rolled a one this time. Damn, jeez. Trust that I... me, we need them. Keep them coming. <laughs> oh. oh. Old school fool, you rolled a one. I will use another point of blast to change that to a two. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Guys like to make fun of Arn, but geez, he's helping you out today. All right. Who um, said we made fun of Arn? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, that's actually aimed at Cody. Is he like? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the Lucerne Hammer bounces off the hide. Uh, Valdi. Oh, uh, no. Just missed. Uh, <laughs> Almost was able to pierce the, the creature's hide. Fergus. Uh, unfortunately, no. That is just a wild swing. We have Gar. That is a hit. 
Let's see what kind of damage. Oh, goblin. Three. Okay. All right. Again, the uh, membranes flap as it uh, seems agitated. All right, Phil, are you going to take your shot with your plus four because you've been aiming? Yes, sir. And it's going to go towards either the closest one or the worst looking one. There's just the one. Yeah, it's just a big thing. Holy crap, we've just been fighting one of these? Yep. Yes. Well, uh, wish me luck. 19 nice. verses. I think that's a hit. Yes, it is, sir. Six. Ooh, a solid hit. Um, if you're looking at no. that picture, your arrow goes like into the center where all those like tendrils are, and the thing roils back in pain, and the uh, and the membranes flap <laughs> pretty wildly. Splendid. All right, its turn. Oh my goodness, Hans and Baldy again. And this time I rolled an 8 and a 6. Uh, Baldy, you're actually able to get your shield up this time. And uh, the uh, heavy slap of a tentacle hits it. And uh, Hans, you side uh, sidestep another attack from a tentacle. Let's roll initiative. I rolled a 3. All right, so I'm going to take it this time. I don't want to roll them all. All right. <laughs> I'll do it. I still have a luck point. Alright, you guys are going Four. first. Alright, you the Lucerne Hammer finally hits. <laughs> For one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Valdi, your attack is uh, a miss. Gar, yours is just barely a miss. Or, you know, you miss by one, essentially. Uh, we got Fergus left, right? And Philly. Fergus, that is a miss. Mm. Bounces off this uh, creature's hide. Philly, what are you doing? Are there any uh, large stones around? Oh yeah, I mean you're on a gravel path. I mean, we'll all right, I'll take the biggest, hardest-looking stone and take another aim action. Okay, all right. I threw two spears, and that's all I had. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, um, it's turn. All right, this time it's Fergus and Hans. All right, uh, Hans. This, or I'm sorry, Fergus. This is going to be a hit. For eight points of damage, it just smacks you upside the head, kind of sending you to the side a little bit, staggering. You have like this burn mark on your cheek. Okay. What's your hit points at first? Uh, that'd be 21 minus 8, 13. Okay. Okay. I rolled a 2 for initiative. Hans, it missed you. All right, you guys are going first again. What's happening? Nice. I threw the stone. Well, you have, you're aiming this round, right? Oh, no, you picked one. Yeah, so go ahead. Go ahead, roll. That's 11. Okay. That's a miss. 11. How does uh, attacking offensively work? Um, You take a minus 4 to your AC, and you get a plus 2 to your attack. Uh, yeah, I think I'll stick with normal attack. Okay. All right, looks like you all missed this round. And we got Fergus and Valdi being targeted. Oh, this is a total miss, yeah. Uh, six and a four. Yeah, tentacles flying wildly. Um, it's got like this uh, uh, arrow, or no, spear, excuse me, sticking out of its front, and it's still reeling. So, all right, let's roll initiative. I rolled, jeez, oh, I rolled a one. Again, I don't want to kill you. It's just, you know. All right, four. Okay, you guys are first. 
I pick up another stone and start aiming. <laughs> I'll aim this round too. Okay, that's a miss. That is a hit there, Fergus. That is a solid hit. Oh my god, nine points of damage. Um, I'm doing you hit harder when you when you thrust with your sword and you curse. Yes, Fergus, you uh, curse loudly, and uh, you sever one of the uh, tentacles, and uh, the thing reels in pain and actually seems to be looking at you now. Uh, and it attacks with both of its uh, attacks on you. I rolled a 12 and an 8, which are going to miss you. So let's roll initiative. Uh, Gar, roll initiative for me. I rolled a 4. Four. Simultaneous fighting. All right. What are you guys doing? Uh, my aim shot's going out. Okay. I, I'm going to fight defensively and back up slowly and shout at everyone to attack it from the rear since it's got a, 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 a fappy affection for me now. I'm going to cast Cure Light Wounds on Fergie. Okay. Uh... Oh, God. <laughs> Arrows and stones are just flying wildly around. Uh, Valdi, uh, what are you doing? Are you going to try to move around behind this is it? This the last round for the... It, was... yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll see if I can move around behind it. Oh, yeah, this is the last round for my extra hit points. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to do it. Uh, it's uh, After that one attack from uh, Fergus, it's pretty focused on him right now. Okay, and that's a plus two for back attacks. Yes. Okay. I have a good enough roll. <laughs> All right. Um, and now it will attack. Ugh. Now I, I started off pretty hot in this combat. Now I'm fizzling. Uh, both are misses as uh, Fergus bats these uh, tentacles away with his uh, shield. Roll initiative. Uh, Philly. I rolled a three. All right. Let's see if I roll three or more. Bang. Three. All right. It's happening simultaneously again. Uh, what are you guys doing? So we got Valdi kind of behind him. Uh, Gar and Philly kind of to the south of everyone on the map here. I'll just show it real quick again. As, Aim uh, in with a rock. And... Uh, <laughs> Hans and Fergus are sort of facing it in the front. Uh, yeah, I'm fighting defensively this round. And, and I'm going to press my attack, so I'll take advantage of the back attack and the uh, offensive fighting. Or, okay, sorry, I'm offensive gonna... fighting. I'm going to okay. aim. Okay. You got a natural 20. Get your right. five hit points, Fergie. Yeah, All right. I got All right, roll for damage as you, like, s slice off one of the smaller tentacles uh, and the thing spins around to face you, Valdi. All right. Well, actually, this is happening at the same time, so it's still pretty focused on uh, 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 Fergus at the moment. But it will be spinning around. I rolled two eights. Okay. All right. Let's roll initiative. I rolled a five this time as it spins around to uh, deal with Valdi. When it spins around, I'll switch into pressing the attack on its on its bunghole. <laughs> Very My good. My is like a bunghole. <laughs> I'll switch to defensive fighting. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's have... Uh, what did I roll for initiative? I think I rolled a four. All right, you guys are going first. All right. And I aimed... 21 verses. All right. Well, Ooh, lots of hits. Yeah, and then uh, what's defensive? Minus two to attack? Yes, but no, minus four to attack, plus two to your uh, armor class. Okay. We'll do that. And I'm correct in thinking a rock is a D3, right? Correct. Correct. One damage again. Hit for six with looser hammer after change of weapon. Right, yeah. Uh, okay. 
just sorry, I'm doing some math in my head here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, rocked. It. You guys did a lot of damage. You're just beating on this thing. Um, let's see. Yeah. No. It's uh, it's not going to break. It's on a mission. A mission from a god. Yes. And it more like will... a demon bitch. Goes to attack Valdi with an 11 and a 15. Uh, my defensive fighting worked. I'm a 16 AC. Oh yeah, uh, you your uh, uh, your shield comes up and you actually feel the crushing weight of this creature's uh, powerful attack, but you take no damage. All right, let's roll initiative. I rolled a four this time. Hey, is it still attacking Vivaldi this round, or is it spinning again since it's uh, kind of slow and lumbering in the sky? Yeah, um, I'm trying to. You guys, all this damage was popping up. I'm trying to see who did the most. Uh, Looks like Gar. Now it's going to stay focused on Valdi at this point. <laughs> so. Press the attack. Picking up a rock and aiming. All right. Yeah, I rolled a three and a twelve. Valdi, you're able to dodge its uh, now obviously like frantic flailing attacks. Go ahead, guys. What are you doing? Missing. I'll use luck. I'll use a bless point for that. Change it to a seventeen. Okay, that's a hit. All right. The short bow arrow flies. Okay, one point of damage. Is it still focused on me, or does it? Yes, <laughs> yes, it's still focused on you. Okay, I'll stick with the defensive fighting then. Okay, that is a miss. <laughs> All right, that is a hit on the old bungholio there, Fergus. <laughs> Fergus. All right. Out of morbid curiosity, there is fungus that directly target corn, right? I think yeah, so. I think yeah, it's like food. And it's given how this is a big mushroom, we really are fighting the great corn holy, aren't we? Is Lake Titty Kaka around here? <laughs> it could be the one uh, next that, That's what St. Michael's Bay used to be called before they Christianized. <laughs> there you go. Yes, I love it. It's, so it's, yes, it's officially <laughs> canon. All right, um, I think that's it, right? Everybody go. Um, yes. Yeah, because Philly's aiming this round, right? Yep. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, it after getting a decisive uh, hit from Fergus, it spins around to attack it him. I'll go defensive. Uh, four. 18 and an 18. Well, this round you were offensive, so. Okay, I was pressing attack. Okay. So the 14, and it, I know the 18 hits. Is it 14? No, no. Uh, I'm pressing attack. Uh, yeah, it's minus four. I mean, AC 13. Okay. Uh, you take a total of eight damage from both uh, tentacle slaps, and you get staggered back. That puts me down to 10. I rolled a two for initiative. Hans, roll initiative. What do we got? All right, going at the same time again. What are you guys doing? I'll switch to... Um... Fighting defensively since he's up on my grill. Okay. And I'll switch to fighting offensively. And go for that back attack again. Okay. You know what I'm doing. Yup. Yeah. 14. That's a miss. Okay. Alright, Valdi, that's a hit. Looking for the win. Six points. Alright, yeah, that's a... Uh, you slice off some of the dangling ten uh, tendrils from its, uh, the back and uh, 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 cut into some of the membrane. And I think that's everybody. So, uh, But it, we're going at the same time, so it's still targeting 
Fergus, and uh, my highest roll is a 13, which is not going to hit because he's fighting defensively. So initiative, I, this I suspect will be the last round. I rolled a one. <laughs> If this is going to be the last That's round, I'm... Yeah, I'm just going to throw a rock. All right. No aiming, <laughs> just, just stress throwing. Yeah, I'm still fine defensively. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. I'm going to put my bow away. Pull my short sword and charge. Still doing offensive. X. All right, Valdi. Another, another net 20. I've used all of my supply of 20s for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> All right, that is a hit, Valdi. Let's roll some damage here. Okay. All right, yeah. Um, the thing after the last strike, where you you know cut off some of the tendrils that it's that seem to be dangling from the bottom, that maybe help it levitate or, or uh, and float, um, cutting into some of the membrane. Uh, it like spins around, and as it does, uh, you cut open. Uh, the, the large portion of that like central mass uh, spilling out um, like sort of all, all this uh, goo and the thing just sort of uh, uh, flutters frantically for a second uh, and the, the, the membranes inside the big wings section uh, fluttering frantically and then it just slumps to the ground uh, and immediately takes on sort of like a dried and starts to dry like this dry like like crackle uh the skin crackling and it, as as it sort of like just instantly turns to dust dehydrated mushroom rations mm. I'm not convinced we should eat those we can make a nice tea coming around the corner of the um uh Trying to get the town. Yeah, around the corner, you actually see a large uh, group of uh, of townsfolk with pitchforks and, and torches, uh, getting ready to like fight whatever. Um, but then they see you guys uh, take care of this thing, and they they actually look quite relieved. Miller, the Miller decided he was going to man up after all. Oh no, the Miller uh, is still. Uh, you actually see him behind a bush, oh, okay. pointing, pointing. It's over oh, there. It's over there. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mister Miller! So after the heroism wears off, I'm just back to like whatever uh, hit points I had before, or do I take the damage that I took? You go back to all right. So if you gain nine hit points and you took eight points of damage, then you would go back to. Whatever you were before you got the heroism, right? It, unless you went below that damage. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, it comes off the heroism. seven hit points, you go back to seven. Okay, cool. Right, since we got an audience, I'll, I'll do a, a bro dance on top of the, uh, the, 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 the dissipating monster and uh, shout loudly to the skies and do a bro high five to my cousin. Philly will very carefully fetch her spear and clean it on the ground. Only we had had the dogs with us. We could have hit it from five sides instead of just two. That's right. That's the whole point. We need the wolf pack. Put the wolf pack on it and start using the spears. Yeah, have the dogs do grappling. <laughs> that's, what, that's what dogs actually do. They actually, like, drag their prey to the ground, so... Oh, yeah. They each grab a tentacle. Yeah, yeah. well, we won. Dude. They just bite on and lock on. All right. If you want to build their jaws up, you take like a big knot of rope on a, on a pulley like you use for an engine, dip it in blood, and they lock on, and you just pull them up in the air. Let them hang here a while. <laughs> it's raining. All right. Um, what am I looking for here? All right. I want to convince the church to hold a big service over here at this old chapel so that we can show that it's been taken care of. And mm. Oh, Turjan and uh, Calmer would have absolutely no problem doing that, um, especially considering 
Well, Turgeon still wants to burn the place to the ground. Um, that being said, you guys going to uh, search the inside of the uh, of the old home there? Yes. And it's safe. Yeah, sure. Okay, let me. Uh... Is there any more uh, fungal debris in there? Oh uh, no, it's um. It's actually nice, warm, and cozy because you had a fire going, and uh, <laughs> the uh, fungus has uh, died off, and uh, your game master uh, lost his place in his notes. Oh, there they are. You and, can take a sec, dude. And uh, so, um, when you. If you check out where the creature originated from, yeah, it's a it's basically where the livestock would stay in the winter, all right, it, uh, when they wanted to. Um, you just see some detritus, a lot of fungal growth that's been dying off. Um, there is uh, nothing else of significance. However, um, when you check the upstairs you see a nicely for i mean how do i put this it's a plain room in so far as it's you know used to be the home of commoners farmers um but one of the beds uh has some really nice sheets on it that are now old um it looks like it was well taken care of and at least the the bed was set up nice um and there is a chest um Inside that chest, um, you see there is uh, simply a armband and a small sack with a gem in it, worth a hundred silver pieces. Uh, Not bad. Hans, you recognize that armband as something that Malthus retrieved from the moat house, although uh, about a year ago, game time. Oh. Do, we, uh, that's uh, right. do I surmise that this is what's caused all this problem? Um, Rose Bell Grant. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to give you a three out of a six instead of the two out of six. I'm giving you a bonus. Two. All right. Uh, no, it, you don't know this. This was uh, something that Malthus uh, uh, was studying because uh, he believed it might allow him to talk to the undead. All right, let's take Billy. that thing and, and let's take it and see if uh, any of our people here might be able to look at it. I'm a different sort of magic user, but uh, Philly will t look it over if she can. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Why don't you make a? Um, I'll let you make an intelligence check. Spundy. I just got it. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is uh, a somewhat, you're not a hundred percent sure how it works, uh, but you do know that uh, whatever, that this is a um, an item that was I don't want to say this I guess personally crafted you can tell by the runes on it and uh, personally crafted of uh, you surmise that it's probably it was probably a gift uh, but it, uh, as any magic um, gift or not there comes a price with its use Mm. Is that the one that made your arm go all funky if you used it? That's not, is it? That was that finger you found or something. No. Was that the one where you got to cut your tongue out first? <laughs> I love. It's like all these lamentation stuff. Uh, it is the thing that when you put it on, it will shrivel your arm. Yes. Uh, oh yeah. 
In that case, we're not going to put it on right away, obviously. We'll, uh... <laughs> Although, if this was Malthus' house, and we've purified it from the, the mushrooms for now, and we still got that magical equipment, and this probably still has magical equipment, um, would you guys be insulted if Philly was to set up shop here in town? Well, we have to get get control of it first. Let's see if we can. That is that is fair. If we get control, though, I will be able to research research new spells, research magic items, uh, look up on ancient lores, and pretty much just be uh, used throughout the week. I need to make some bread. I need to make some hit point bread so I can eat some. <laughs> and we'll need to find some halfling and some linguist to some find some way to copy the magic and the text into a new parchment. Actually, that could be a first project. Yeah. How's that barn looking? I want to check that out. Uh, the barn? Um, yeah, there's a loft, and um, you actually see uh, right at the base of you know that dotted line going down on the map, that's just like the railing from the loft, okay? You yep. see like a wet splotch, okay, whatever was up there, obviously landed here. Going up the ladder, uh, you see... Uh, where some of the tendrils that had come up into the barn were was congregating around um, uh, and filling. Uh, well, I should, I'm sorry, congregating around um, and sort of covering uh, some old uh, clothing, um, uh, finely crafted, you know, nice clothing of uh, someone who would consider himself will say superior to uh, the people around him. You surmise that this was probably Malthus's clothes. Yeah. So he was trying to make a, a, a facsimile of him? Makes me wonder if our dudes at the uh, trader are not facsimiles as well. Oh. Maybe Tanner's a facsimile and he's been leading on for half a year. <laughs> Alright, we will stop here um, and I will get you guys your XP uh, which you'll be able to immediately um, including the treasure XP that is because you're already in town and maybe you'll gain a level, I don't know <laughs>